Uh, I, I jokingly always say, I'm not a straight A student, but, uh, and I got to be a B student because of extra credit. And uh, so how do you become successful as a salesperson or as a business person? And I think it comes down to enhancing the skills that you're given. Leadership is everywhere. In our work, in our family, in our community. We see leaders by their actions. We know their legacy. This podcast is about leaders, people just like you, doing amazing things every day. I hope these stories inspire you, they motivate you, and they fuel your leadership legacy. My name is Vicki Guy. Welcome to Ignite. Hi, and welcome to Ignite. We are all in sales. Yes, you. You heard me. You are in sales. If you've ever tried to influence anyone, a colleague, a friend, a child, a client, about anything at all, where to eat, where to go, what to order, what to buy, then you're selling. And selling sometimes can be very, very complicated, and it's easy for us to lose focus of the basics. So sometimes the more we know about a topic, the more complicated it can be. So how do we rise above that? How do we make it simple so that we can be more effective in selling? Our guest today, Dean Carroll, a career coach and sales trainer, will help us answer those questions. Dean has been in senior leadership positions for more than three decades with major publishing companies. Most recently, Dean was the senior vice president of sales for Wiley Publishing. He is currently a sales training instructor with 12 courses that have had over 700,000 views. Dean is the author of this book, Mastering the Basics, Simple Lessons for Achieving Success in Business. In just a moment, we'll be back to talk to Dean. Welcome to IT Pro TV, an e-learning company with thousands of hours of engaging video training for IT teams, with fresh training courses added daily. What makes IT Pro TV stand out? It all starts with our edutainers, who create better than classroom experiences for training your team will look forward to watching. So an edutainer is someone who takes a topic, an, an educational topic, and makes it more fun, enjoyable. My vision for IT Pro TV was to make the product that I wish I had when I got started. The dashboard's great because you can pick up right where you left off, you can see new courses that are available, and you also have access to a variety of study tools with a membership. You can follow along with virtual labs and test your skills with practice tests. IT leaders can also take advantage of the Pro Portal to help their team grow. The IT Pro TV Pro Portal gives leaders the power to manage their investment in IT training. They can assign seats and courses and check in on progress to ensure their outcomes are being met. And unlike traditional training, you aren't handcuffed to your desk. Sure, you can watch from there or from your couch with Apple TV and Roku apps or from anywhere using mobile apps. The training is even available for download. If you're ready for your team to watch and learn, check out the flexible plan choices online and request a live demo for your business today at www.itpro.tv. Welcome back to Ignite. Today we're joined with Dean Carroll. He is an expert in sales training and has an extensive background in uh, entrepreneurship and in business leadership. Dean, welcome to Ignite. How are you doing? Vicki, it's great to be with you today and thanks so much for inviting me to join your podcast. Really appreciate it. You are very welcome. I'm so thrilled to have you here today. And as I mentioned to you before, Ignite is a podcast that's all about people that fill their space with really cool things and create leadership where they are. And you have an impressive number of views um, in a sales training course that you've completed. And it's, I think it's approaching almost a million views um, overall from all of your courses. So certainly the impact that you're making as a leader in that space has been significant. So I wanted to start our conversations today with really a little bit about kind of a short version of who you are and what you, mm -hmm. you know, how you got started in this sales training space. Well, I've been in sales for more than uh, three decades, Vicki, and uh, mostly in the publishing business. And uh, I've been fortunate to work with some amazing sales teams and sales organizations. And uh, I sold the, everything from textbooks to software to general interest books and you name it. And I worked with accounts from the small uh, corner bookstore to Amazon and Barnes and Noble Borders. 
and been able to travel the world. And I work with sales representatives from around the world. So it's been an exciting uh, process along the way. Um, like every industry, the publishing industry has changed dramatically. And about five years ago, uh, instead of doing you know, training and, and uh, working with customers, I was spending so much time doing reorganizing and restructuring, again, which is similar to every business. And so I decided to move into something different and go on my own and do sales training. I went back to school uh, to do uh, additional training and coaching. And that's what I do full time now. I do coaching and I do sales training. I do presentations uh, based off of my book, Mastering the Basics. And the courses that you mentioned, I have sales courses with LinkedIn Learning. So a little diverse portfolio of, uh, of businesses that I'm involved with. Sounds like you have so much experience to draw from. It's got to be sometimes hard to know which to pick from. So I love the fact that I wanted to maybe showcase your book a little bit, Mastering the Basics, because I, I took a peek at it. And it, what I loved about it is that it it seemed like it was maybe all the things that you've experienced throughout your career in a very nice package to say, hey, remember about this one thing that you should be doing as a sales professional? So I love that. And I'm wondering if that was really the impetus for you writing that book. It, I'm sure the experience definitely, um, you, did you take notes or did you just sit down one day and say, I'm going to think about all the things that I've learned and seen over the years? It's a little bit of both. You know, what's interesting is I think when we all get into sales or any new job, we get intimidated by, by people who may have that fancy title that the senior vice president of sales or the C chief marketing officer, or they have advanced degrees. And we feel like we have to try and overperform or, or do things that maybe we're not been trained at yet. And I found throughout the course of my year uh, years in business is to go back and try to enhance basic skills. And that's uh, people skills, social skills, soft skills, uh, basics of working hard, you know, as a salesperson, being ready and prepared. And uh, I found myself, these are lessons that through the years I've taught the sales organizations that I've worked with. And I've tried to focus on how we enhance the skills that we were given. Uh, I, I jokingly always say, I'm not a straight A student, but, uh, and I got to be a B student because of extra credit. And uh, so how do you become successful as a salesperson or as a business person? And I think it comes down to enhancing the skills that we're given. And uh, we can't change who we are. So how do we improve the skills that we were given? And that was the impetus uh, for the book. And I, I came up with uh, 200 different topics, you know, ranging from, uh, from how you work uh, with uh, micromanagers to how you work with certain types of customers. And each one is about a page, page and a half long. This is not a... Uh, a thesis uh, from the Harvard Business School. It is uh, really uh, the working the streets of a sales professional or a business person and how by enhancing your skills, you can uh, maximize your abilities and do well in business. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely drawn from experience, it sounds. And, you know, one of the things that you just said that I really want to hone in on is it's about those skills that we already have and, and really being able to kind of tap into those and, and use those. I've known people who I've thought, wow, that's just a natural salesperson. And then I've known people that maybe were not a natural salesperson, but they worked really hard in certain things to become really good in sales. So from your experience, are there a couple of things that you see, whether they're natural or learned kind of traits in sales that really make people very successful? Well, I think all of us in sales have to learn to listen more. And uh, that's probably the, the most important thing and the lesson that I learned when I first started was, you know, we all talk too much. And uh, whether you're the best salesperson or the brand new salesperson or somebody who's been around for as long as I have, we always have to continue to learn to listen better and gain the trust of the people we work with. So it's listening, asking good questions, being curious. Those are the best sales professionals. It's listening and, and trying to dig in and find those, uh, find those pain points. And I think oftentimes, you know, we watch, uh, you know, movies and we see, you know, The Wolf of Wall Street or we watch uh, Alec Baldwin, you know, like always be closing. And we think that's what sales is all about. And that's those movies make for great entertainment. But I think it's the farthest thing of what we really do for a living. I mean, you know, you've worked in pharmaceutical sales. You know what it's like to be across the table or on the phone from somebody trying to determine what their needs are. 
and what we need to do to provide solutions to the customers that we work with. And uh, it's not rocket science, but sometimes we make it too complicated, which again, it goes back to my theory of just break it down and make it simple. You know, for all of my courses that I teach, I don't go into advanced methodologies and I don't try to go into advanced training techniques. I try to teach people basic information of asking questions, listening, being curious, and then developing the, the solutions that the customer wants. And uh, to me, that's that's been proved successful for me and the people I've tried to train. It's pretty hard to do sometimes, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> it sure yeah. is. I've experienced times where either myself or my colleagues have, we have so much to share and so much information that we think is really influential that we just want to provide all of that at one time. Can you well, think of a situation where that has happened to you or have you experienced that yourself? I know we, we always want to, we, we, won't, we go from hello to try to close. And I think we still see that from salespeople. It's hello. And the next thing you know, it's like, I'd like to sell you something. And we always have to try to step back. And I remember my very first sales calls, you know, it was many years ago. And uh, this, I was going in to see a, a professor at a university and I brought everything with me. I had catalogs. I had brochures. I had, you know, uh, scripts that I was supposed to work from. And I just had mounds of stuff. And I remember this, the client and the professor I was calling on was laughing. He was smiling. He said, Dean, I, I think you're overprepared. You know, you always want to be prepared as a salesperson, but I had brought the kitchen sink and uh, with me. And uh, it, it's a time when we have to step back and realize and learn a sales process and recognizing that the most important first step is, you know, you do your planning and your preparation, you do your research, but that call, whether it's on the phone or in person, the sales discovery call is the one I think is the most important because you're not selling and you're asking questions and you're trying to learn and build a rapport and build trust with that client. And uh, that's a lesson that I learned early on, but it's something that we always have to continue to try and practice. You know, one of the podcasts, uh, I remember somebody who spoke on one of your podcasts talked about continuous improvement and always be learning. And that is so important. And if, we're, if I'm still selling the same way that I was 35, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, if you're still doing it that way, then you're doing it incorrectly. And I think that's always important to bear in mind. Our improvement and training never ends. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first went through sales training, I won't tell you the year, but it was a long time ago. And I remember it was, you know, give them the features, benefits and close, right? Mm -hmm. And that was a long time ago and things have changed. And you and I have talked about this concept of perhaps those softer skills, being able to read people, uh, listening it sounds like you really emphasize those softer skills and how to engage somebody through that discovery. Is that, am I hearing that correctly? You, you nailed it. That's exactly what I talk to people about. And that's learning and believing in emotional intelligence. It's being aware, not of only of yourself, but more importantly, the person you're with and trying to, you listen carefully, understand what their needs are. It's being socially aware, people aware, and uh, trying to have empathy for what that buyer is going through. And I think that's so critically important. It also involves the people you're, you're managing and leading is trying to understand what they're going through in each of their situations. You know, in the world today or good times, bad times or whatever, people are going through issues or they have something at home they're trying to manage or they're working with a difficult account. Well, I think the best managers and the best leaders are the ones who practice emotional intelligence and always try to learn and understand what their people and what their staff are going through. And then also the buyers and clients that they're working with. So sometimes we say, oh, soft skills, people skills. I think that is one of the most important things for all of us to learn, and no matter what profession we're in. So how do we do that? It sounds like you've had some influences to be able to learn that. But if people are watching today or next week or next year even, and they're like, wow, this sounds like it's really important, and I want to be able to learn how to do that, where can we find that information? Where can we learn that through our experiences, or is there somewhere else that you find to be a good resource for that? I think you have to, you always want to have a good leader to report to. We, I mean, it's what I found now doing my coaching work with people. There are a lot of lousy managers out there who have been put in to leadership positions, but were never trained on how to lead. 
You need to find somebody you can attach yourself with and learn from. And I think that's so important. And having a network of people that you can go to. I think we've all heard that phrase and you have our, your own board of advisors or board of directors that help you out. And Vicki, I'm sure you have people you turn to who say, can you help me out or how I'm going to you know, restructure my work or how my current business is working and how I can continue to grow and develop? For me, I've always been fortunate through the years. I've had terrific people that I've reported to and I've learned from. And I think that is an essential thing for all of us throughout our careers. I've also become full circle on the, on the point of when it's not working, I think you have to make the decision sooner rather than later to move on. You know, I, I go back maybe 15, 20 years ago, I would say to people, well, stick it out, it'll get better or communicate more with your manager and that'll help you out. I've come from the school now, a lot of lousy managers just don't improve. And uh, you have to find, look out for yourself and continue to network with people and finding those places where you can learn and continue to grow and be happy. It's easier said than done, and you just don't push a button and say, I'm gonna leave my job this week. But that's why you always need to be on the lookout for the, the people who can help you grow and develop in your career. You know, Dean, what you're talking about is just it, close to my heart as well, because I'm a big fan of the mastermind concept and right. surrounding yourself with people whether they're immediate, you know, in, in your immediate network or not, to be able to bounce ideas or solve yeah. problems or just think through things maybe a little bit differently. Um, have you been able to integrate that into your practice as well? I mean, do you have a, a group of people that um, is kind of your network or kind of your mastermind group? I'm a big believer in that. And it's it's it ties into some up with networking and having a mastermind group or again the board of advisors. You know, when we say the word network and we all cringe because we think we're all going to have a little tag on our shirt that says, Hi, I'm Vicky or Hi, I'm Dean. And uh, networking is just staying in touch with people within your your network, your in and and uh, people that you know, your acquaintances. It could be other clients that you've dealt with, and then finding those people who are honest and who are open, who are willing to give you ideas. What you don't want is me being your uh, counterpart, Vicki, and I said, Vicki, you're doing a great job, this is terrific. I want somebody that says to me, Dean, this is how you can improve. And one of the things I always hear throughout my career, Dean, stop talking <laughs> and listen, <laughs> listen more. And I think that's always, and I hear that, and that's what I want people to say to me, or Dean, I mean, you could see it right now. I'm a I'm a big hand waver. I, the hands are gone, and I'm always wound up and enthusiastic. And uh, so people say to me, Dean, you need to calm or be slow or be more deliberate. And that's what you want out of advisors and out of your mastermind group and, and saying what, what avenues can you can pursue to continue to improve. And I, I think those are really valuable. And it's uh, not expensive either. It's free. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's more valuable than anything else that you can can get, even if you buy it, right? So yes, I'm absolutely. wondering, if those are really great pieces of information. And what you talked about, about listening, I think every single person can benefit from listening more often, truly listening, like actively listening and hearing the intent behind the message that somebody is delivering. I'm wondering if we can do a little compare contrast right now with you, if you're a game for that. Sure, and absolutely. I'm wondering if um, you can think about a situation in your experience where you felt like you were doing all the right things in the sales situation and it didn't work. And then if we can contrast that with a time or that you can think of where you did something a little bit different and you were surprised or pleasantly happy with the results that you saw, can we compare any times? Can you think of anything that comes to your mind that can showcase some of the things that we've talked about? Well, Vicki, I think there, there are situations in my career when I, you know, when I used to sell software to customers, and uh, I remember years ago going to see educational institutions, and I thought I had the perfect match, and I thought it was priced correctly. I thought it was perfect, and I'd laid out these fabulous presentations for buyers, and then they'd look at me and they say, "No, it's just not right for us," or the pricing wasn't right. And there is nothing more frustrating as a salesperson when you think you've got it all right and you've laid it out all perfectly and the objections are just too difficult to overcome. And you know, there's some great books on handling objections and overcoming objections, but when you're sitting across the table from a buyer or if you're on the phone 
And they're brilliant at being able to say, no, that's not right for us. And they just stare. It's that pause that can be so difficult. And we've all experienced it. Now, conversely, what was great, you know, at, you know, in the late 2000s uh, and early, just before 2008 and eight, before the financial uh, uh, crisis, uh, the the publishing industry was was on fire. You know, Barnes and Noble was growing, and Borders was growing, and Amazon was just getting their steam, and the independent booksellers were doing well, and then globally, booksellers around the world were doing uh, terrific. And I worked with a company named Wiley, and they were making acquisitions, you know, the For Dummies books, a strong uh, computer book list, cookbooks. I had the greatest job in the world because I worked with an unbelievable sales organization. And it was, I got the, I had the best job in the world. I got to go see customers and the buyers would say, you know, uh, they use lines, you have the gold standard of a sales team. You know, how, how great is that? I mean, that's the greatest thing in the world. And uh, so I've had the, the highs and lows of working in business and in sales. And obviously, it's a lot of fun when uh, all bells and all whistles are going and, and the lights are all shining on a, on a product and a program that's working. That's a lot of fun. I can I can relate with both of those. I've been on both sides of the coin, and it's certainly a great uh, feeling when you know the the, the customer is um, on the same page with you, and they're mm-hmm. following, and they're you know buying into everything. It's probably because you have done some discovery, and you have done your homework to be able to connect with them. So I'm wondering, um, because because of those experiences that you've had, and the vast amount of experience that you've had not just in sales, but now training other people in sales. If somebody's watching this and they say, hey, I really want to get better at sales, but I don't really want to go to a course and I don't really want to read a book. Is there one or two things that you can say for someone today to do, to start doing more of or doing better at? Um, We've already talked about listening, so I'm going to take that one off the table. (laughs) Uh, Other than that, is there anything else that you can say, if you do this one thing or these two things, I can guarantee you, that's a big word, I guess, that right. you'll have more success or you'll have more potential for success in in being a, in, in sales. First thing is you have to get the perception of what sales is all about. And it goes back to when we all say we want to be in the sales, be a salesperson, and uh, or we have that first impression of what sales is all about, just wipe that out of your thinking. Uh, the first thing I would say is you have to believe and understand in what you're selling, whether it's software as a service or whether it's a product or whatever it may be, you have to understand and know it intimately, know it really well inside and out. Um, It's very hard. And I think initially, this is what we all get concerned with the sales person being in sales is we hate and concerned about hearing no and hearing that negative. And that leads to the lack of confidence. So when you first start, It's doing that initial training of knowing your product, believing in yourself, um, learning how to ask questions. You know, it's being going back to that line of being curious and trying to understand what that other person is going back to, going back, you know, and goes back to emotional intelligence. And these are not, uh, you know, big, deep, in theory uh, uh, issues or things to learn. These again go back to basic skills, asking good questions, being curious, being coachable. I mean, this is what you do, Vicki. I mean, you work with people and, and train people, and the best people are the ones who are able to be coached and take positive criticism and negative criticism and are able to use that to build and grow. So it's being open, whether you're 22 and just getting into sales, or whether you're 62 at a later stage in your sales career. And I think those are important things for all of us to always remember. Yeah. You know, you reminded me of something really quickly about a question that I typically ask in some of the workshops that I do. So I do leadership development. And so when I'm in a room with leaders from different industries, I'll ask them who's in sales. And maybe one or two of them will raise their hand. And then I say, no, no, really, who's in sales? And then they, I look at them awkwardly. They look at me awkwardly. And then finally, some people, more people will raise their hand. Then I say, you all are in sales. As leaders, 
Yeah. You're really selling your ideas, your philosophy, your vision. So this is not just being a salesperson by title. This is really, especially if someone's in a leadership role, they've got people on their team and they're managing a function or a project or a team. This stuff is really important, isn't it? That's so true. We, we are all in sales and being able to communicate and being able to communicate clearly and honestly. It goes back to whether you're the CEO, CMO, entry-level salesperson, or somebody in finance. It's having credibility. It's developing a reputation and having integrity and having character. I mean, all of those are foundational skills, whether you're in sales or whether you're in finance or in IT. And uh, so as you're teaching your leadership you know, uh, programs and leadership courses with people. It's interesting. It's so true. We are all in sales and uh, our titles may be different, but we're all trying to convey a message to earn trust with the people we're presenting to and talking to and trying to have them follow us as, as leaders. The good leaders <laughs> figure that out pretty quickly, quick, pretty quickly. It's the, the ones who, uh, who see themselves in their lofty titles or lofty roles that, uh, uh, are not successful in doing that for their companies, as you found out. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. As soon as they think differently about their role and, and how that relates to sales, it's almost like light bulbs go off and mm -hmm. they start thinking about the importance of the skills that you already talked about, listening, having emotional intelligence, being curious and asking the right questions. So many things go hand in hand for sure. So, um, Certainly confidence comes into play with this. Um, I, before we wrap up our discussion today, I just really want to dig in to this whole thing about confidence. Right. Because one of the things that you talked about was to be able to be a better salesperson, and we're going to use that term in a, in a broader sense here, you have to be able to be open to people saying no. Right. And I imagine when people say no, I I've had this happen to me, it breaks your confidence. You might start thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to start second guessing myself or my product or my service or whatever it is. So how do you, how have you found um, success in finding that resilience in your confidence when perhaps you're getting no's all the time? It's tough. And I think that's part of being confident is being able to admit it is tough. And I don't care whether you're 22 or been doing it as long as I have. I have moments where it's like, oh, man, this is tough. And it's recognizing that you are going to have those days. You know, again, it goes back to that perception that we have as salespeople always being confident or loud or abrasive and, and ha you know, everything is always going to be a win. And you'll see sales trainers, you know, with the hands waving, saying, guaranteeing, this is how you do it. Uh, that's not the way it works. In the real world, you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. And you have to figure out how you're going to balance it all out. You know, and early in my career, I remember I was saying, what am I doing in this business? You know, this is not fun. I, I, buyers are saying no. I mean, you've been there, Vicki. That's, that's tough. And then you realize, you know what? What I'm looking for is that one positive thing. I'm looking for one customer. I'm looking for that foundational brick, the building block to get me going and building my business and building my territory. There are always going to be people out there who are going to say no. If it's a sunny day, they're going to tell you it's going to rain tomorrow. But what you're looking for are that one person, that one customer, the one account that can build that foundational piece. Now, so you say, I've made it through that. Well, in my 30s and in my 40s, I had moments of highs and I had moments of lows. And I think what all of us need to recognize throughout the course of our career we're going to have moments where our confidence gets rocked. And what we need to do is find the techniques and the skills that get us out of those ruts. And it goes back to, you know, having your board of advisors and somebody who can help you get out of that or point you again in the right direction. You know, and, and, and even now, I, I love when people say to me, Dean, you know, if you seem so confident and assured of yourself, well, I, I still have moments. We all do. And we all know when we have those times when it's like, Am I doing this correctly? Am I doing it right? Well, the trick then is then how do I get out of those ruts? And sometimes it is with a close friend. And sometimes you do, again, in the current economic environment, in the current situation we're in, now is when you need to seek out others who can help you get through uh, difficult times and help you rebuild and grow and develop your confidence again. 
Yeah, you don't have to go it alone. That's for sure. I love that. Well, Dean, thank you so much for joining us on Ignite. Before we wrap, is there anything, any final thought that you want to share with our viewers, our listeners um, before we head out? I think it's just always important. You know, one of my other basic techniques and basic skills is just the basics of be good to people and reach out. You know, ask if somebody needs help. Say thank you. Uh, be there when people need you. And it goes back to empathy and care, mm -hmm. whether it's your customer, a colleague, somebody you're managing or somebody you work with. And I think that's critically important, both as a professional, but also as an individual. Amen. I love that. Karen, we, we've talked about so much today. Uh, I've, took, I've taken some copious notes. Do you mind if I put your book into the posting for this for this session? Vicki, I would love that. It's very kind of you to do so. I really appreciate it. It's a, it's a work of love for me. And if I can help one other person out, I think that's terrific. So thank you so much. And thank you also for letting me join you today. I really enjoyed this. Absolutely. We're so thrilled to have you. And in just a few minutes, we're going to be back with just a few final thoughts here on Ignite. Do you know what's better than being an IT Pro TV member? Being a member for free. Hi, I'm Dom Pazette, co-founder and edutainer here at IT Pro TV. Once you sign up for an IT Pro TV personal membership subscription, you'll automatically be part of our referral program. Then all you have to do is share your personal referral link and code with your friends and colleagues. Every time one signs up, you get money off your subscription. Sign up enough and your membership is free. That's right, access to all your favorite IT training, totally free. Kind of feels like stealing, doesn't it? Check out the link below to learn how to get your code and start sharing today. Welcome back to Ignite. We hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dean. Thanks for listening to Ignite. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcast or YouTube and follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. From all of us here at Ignite, we'll see you next time.